Welcome back to the Starting Strength Podcast. I, of course, am your host, Mark Ripito. And with us this week is uh, one of our Starting Strength coaches, uh, Tom Stasio. Tom is on staff at, uh, on the strength coaching staff at uh, uh, Sacramento State University in California, I believe. It's California, right? That's the name of the Correct. Name Correct. of the state out there. And uh, he's uh, joined today by uh, one of his athletes, Mary Peck, who is uh, a rather accomplished Olympic weightlifter. And we are going to talk today about uh, our approach to training the Olympic lifts. And uh, we're going to pick Tom's brain for a while. Thank you guys for being with us today. So, Tom, when we first met you, it was, uh, oh, I guess it was back in 2000. 11 or 12, and I can't remember what it was. We had uh, uh, we had come to Sac State to do our seminar out there, and you took the thing, and had some problems with the coaching certification the first time through, and uh, made it through a, uh, on a second try. Uh, what was the what was the what did you learn? I mean, what was the what was the deal? I do remember your kind of uh, previous to our seminar having a different uh, 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 approach to this kind of coaching stuff than, than we do, but you seem to have uh, begun to agree more with what we what we talk about. Sure. You know, what, yeah, so what so, happened? Well. I mean, were we right or were you wrong or were we wrong and yeah, you're yeah, right and you now know, we're doing I, it I, I your guess, way? What the I hell's can, the deal? Yeah, I can, I can eat some humble pie here and say I was uh, – I was a little brainwashed, kind of, my background, I'd grown up, um, you know, I'd been lifting for a long time before I took the seminar. I had competed in Olympic lifting uh, as a junior when I was young, never never that great at it, but did it, and, you know, learned a lot of Those are who kind makes of the, the best coaches. <laughs> That's who makes the best coaches. And I... Uh, I learned, you know, a lot of stuff through, like, kind of the Olympic lifting community. My coach was very heavily based in Olympic lifting. Um, and, you know, that was kind of my style, just what I knew. Um, and then once I came out to Sacramento, I got hooked up with Jared Neslin, and he's I'm still with him. He's the head coach here, and he kind of forced starting strength on me. Um, he bought into it, and he had all the whole staff read the books. Um started coaching, you know, sort of in starting strength methods as best as we kind of knew how before the seminar. We were just kind of getting into it once we took the seminar. And um, when I came into the seminar, I had a little bit of experience with a lot of the methods and um, kind of the starting strength, everything that you guys teach. And I was skeptical of it all. You know, I kind of came in there with a little chip on my shoulder just like most of the Olympic lifting coaches that I talk to now. You know, it's just this kind of us versus them mentality. And, uh, you know, I was all about low hip start position, S-curve. I even remember having a pretty long debate with you about the S-curve and, you know, high bar squatting being better for Olympic lifting and all that type of stuff. And, you know, I came into the seminar and, failed it didn't didn't do that well because i was a little reluctant to it and you know i think this is what i do i'm a coach and this is what i want to be good at and that's what i do with my athletes not even just her but th my job is a strength conditioning coach and i want to get better at it and i because i couldn't really poke holes in the arguments you guys were giving me i, I was like well i really got to take a look at what i believe in so from there i you know reread the books went over it even further as best I could in terms of, you know, understanding the physics, the biomechanics, the anatomy, the physiology, everything behind it. And with that, I started trying to coach better the lifts and also just kind of the coaching within the methods more and learning more about them. And it, it made me a believer. I, I started doing it myself and started feeling the results. I started seeing the results with her. And then also all the, I mean, I coach, hundreds of athletes a day and when we switched over to low bar back squatting it was like whoa like this is this is a game changer it was right the, our injury levels 
went way down. I, 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 we haven't had a knee problem in years. Our ha hamstring pulls don't happen anymore. Uh, the thing, shoulder problem, like all those things that we used to, as strength coaches, have tons of issues with, it, it, it was like, well, that doesn't, we don't even think about that stuff anymore. Like, it, it just got basically erased to, to the point of where, you know, now the, we could just focus on training so much better, you know, such, such a higher level that it made a huge believer in me. So and then I was like, well, I really, I got to go back and get, I got to become a starting strength coach. So, you know, I went back and really poured myself into it and made sure that I passed the test this time. And since then, the, the, the rest has been history. It's, it's really been kind of a, been a boon for us to, to pull from in terms of what, what we do and not only with her, but all the athletes that I coach and in, in developing them way better than I was doing in the past or could have done had I not got involved in starting straight. Well, and we're happy you're here, Tom. Well, there is a thread on the forum right this minute that has, uh, uh, I've actually been typing on it a little bit. We have discussed uh, uh, Olympic weightlifting on the forum at various times over the past several years, and I've grown rather weary of the topic because of the uh, level of engagement that uh, we generally get from people who are arguing their point, and uh, I was kind of tired of dealing with these non-arguments. So I let it go for a while, but somebody posted something. Uh, have you uh, have you seen this little thread we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. The uh, More the Olympic about... weightlifting stuff thread or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, and sure enough, somebody chimed in and made the standard dry arguments about uh, well, the greatest lifters in the world do it a certain way, and then it must be right. You know, standard nonsense. Phenomenology, not an argument, yeah. not analysis, mere historical observation. So, how do you guys train, Tom? What do you guys do? Well, you know, uh, it's it's a, the way we train is you know it's evolved a lot you know since I've coached her. I mean, I'm a young coach, so I've learned a lot through her growing, you know, and from her, you know, a lot of trial and error, and basically from where she started as a beginner and to where she is now, where she's getting, you know, to more higher level intermediate to advanced. Um, you know, I, I've learned a lot and changed a lot about how I program and how we train. Um, but really at, at the heart of everything that we do and what we've always done, and again, you preach to this and I've written on the forum about it on several occasions. and. Basically, my main argument is we try to get stronger. Strength is the basis, amazingly enough, of a strength sport. And uh, how this is so elusive is, uh, is beyond my ability to comprehend. Yeah, it's, uh, I it's, mean, really, how do you have a, a conversation with somebody who thinks that a 750-pound deadlift could slow down a 450 pound clean yeah what do you say yeah, to somebody that it, really it, thinks that i i don't know where you begin it's to... it's a tough it's a tough argument to have with with a lot of these these people involved in olympic lifting because it's it's almost gotten to the point where where strength is almost faux pas like that you shouldn't even you really don't want to be too strong and that yeah, you, it's you like know, cheating it's almost, yeah it's like it's there's something wrong with it it's like cheating. It, you wouldn't want to cheat, would you? Right. Well, you can't learn to jerk correctly unless your, you know, press is like 40 kilos. Yeah. You know, well, you can't correctly jerk 100 if, you're, if your press is any stronger than 40. I've actually heard people say that. Uh, yeah, and and it's, it's, it's puzzling to me. So uh, what, uh, Mary, what, uh, what brought you to this sport? Um, so I was a gymnast before in college. Um, once I finished up with my uh, NC2A eligibility, I began lifting under Tom. Um, and just have been lifting ever since. I kind of dabbled in it a little bit before my senior year of gymnastics. But um, I just did, you know, like three days a week kind of stuff. And then I stopped so I could finish my last year of gymnastics. But um, I really liked it. And 
I was fortunate enough to have Tom around, so he started coaching me ever since I was finished with gymnastics. Well, it, it's a it, it's a good thing you you've gotten into this because it gives you a postgraduate, so to speak, uh, competitive venue that yeah. most people don't have in gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, um, I was um been competitive my whole life, so it was nice having Olympic weightlifting I, after. I do, uh, and this just because I don't know, is there a a, a post college venue for gymnastics competition i'm sure there is i'm just not aware no. of it it's it's not as broad as uh as uh the the actual team uh exposure to competition at a college i don't imagine yeah um, are you saying that is there any gymnastics right. post college yeah no there's not so college is um basically the end that's kind of, of the career. end of the road for yeah. a competitive yeah. gymnastics career yeah, and if you're going to go to the Olympics, you do it before college. Sure. You peak earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're going to peak. You're going to be at the Olympics when you're 17, 18, 19. Yeah. Probably. 21-year-old gymnast is a, is a old. wizened old hag. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and we can all see that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so uh, when you decided to be a competitive Olympic lifter, uh, was there a, a – a large mindset change in your approach to your training or did this, uh -huh. did this smoothly dovetail into what you'd already been doing uh i'd say it kind of smoothly went into already kind of what i was doing um like i said i always liked that competitive atmosphere and when i was ending my gymnastics career it was kind of like oh man i sort of have to enter adult life and i don't know if i was quite ready to give up athletics hey, the hell so with that man yeah, I managed that. to avoid it for 60 <laughs> years now. So, uh, yeah, I kind of just got into Olympic weightlifting and just did it for fun um, yeah. and then kind of realized it had a little bit more potential. In well, it. I, I think you uh, your results have, have kind of demonstrated that. What uh, What's your situation nationally now? Um, As far as, I don't know. Ranking. Ranking. Well, yeah, rankings you know, are, you know. On the, but what did you win? What did you lose? Who kicked your ass? Whose ass did you kick, so to speak? Um, I guess I'll say the most success I've had thus far is um, I performed really well at the Arnold Championships last year, um, and I secured a spot on the Pan Am game team, right? Yeah, yeah and then because um, they added another spot, and then I got injured, um, so didn't do any of the Pan Am stuff. But um, after that, I got invited to China, and I competed in China. Um, and right now, I think our next big, big goal is nationals. To just do really well and perform really well there. All right. When are the nationals? This is this. Is, we're taping this on New Year's Eve of 2015. Nationals are what June? In May. May. This year. May. They're early. They're early this early year. Early. So yeah. this this uh, this year it's a little different than they've ever done. Um, they're, they're pairing up the Nationals with the Olympic Trials. So they're having them all at one site. They're having it at Salt Lake City in May. And there's only well, going to be the done Olympic that several times before. They've, uh, for, for, the, um, for this year, they're, we only have Olympic Trials for women, hmm. again, because there's no men that are – we, <laughs> we don't have a slot for the men. So <laughs> they're doing the uh, – the Olympic trials and the nationals at the same meet, and it's still a little cloudy how they're gonna do all the qualifications for the Olympics. But I guess we'll we'll find out when the the date nears. Well, since you brought it up, Tom, uh, why do we not have any men going to the Olympics in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro in Olympic weightlifting? Why would that be? Well, we uh, we didn't score enough points at at the World Championships and. How does that work? So basically, the way that you can go to the Olympics as a as a country is you need to earn a certain amount of points and rank within. I think it's the top 25 at the World Championships in the couple of years prior to the Olympics. So in other words, so, you accumulate points over the three years previous to the Olympic year to uh, obtain a placing for your athletes at the Olympics, in this case, Correct. in 2016. Correct. Uh, so, and then with, you know, with your scoring, <clears throat> based on how many points you accumulate, 
that will determine whether or not you have any slots for the Olympics. Right. And uh, we, uh, just to be clear, we uh, uh, as a country failed to accumulate enough points for our male lifters Correct. to enable right. them to go compete at the Olympics in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro. Correct. And, and that would be because they did not place high enough in international competition. Right. So stated in another way, we failed to lift heavy enough weights to place high enough in the world to Correct. accumulate sufficient points. Correct. And this is somehow not related to the fact that Olympic lifting coaches in this country do not emphasize strength enough. And and the reason I'm being pedantic here is because I'm I realize that a lot of people are listening to this for the first time are just simply not going to understand what it is the hell we are talking about here. Right. I mean, it would seem obvious to um, persons in other sports or outside this sport or lay people that the heavier the weight you could pick up off the floor, the stronger you would be and the stronger you are, the better it is to accelerate a lighter than limit weight enough to clean it to your shoulders and jerk it overhead or snatch it overhead. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. You, it, it, this seems like an arithmetic problem that would be rather easy to solve. Yet, what is the uh, what is the dogma? Try to explain this to people. Well, you know the. <laughs> I wish I could give you a, a straight answer for that one, but I, I really haven't heard too many good arguments really that make sense, but. You know, the the general theme that seems to come along with Olympic weightlifting that, you know, I, I tend to hear and what has been kind of propagated by most Olympic lifting coaches is this idea more so of, you know, it's a, it's a technique and it's a, it's a technique-based sport that's based on speed and precision and, you know, that's the number one priority. And right. That's what takes precedent over anything else and that strength is almost secondary well not almost right. it is it's it's secondary and it to well but, these kind of but but other who, characteristics. so who wins the weight class say you're competing in the uh, 94 kilo weight class they haven't changed that again have they we're still no, 94. still 94 still 94 so who wins the 94 kilo weight class the uh, guy the with the with best the, looking clean and jerk and snatch no the highest total most most weight so the most so the weight lifted so the heaviest Weight yeah. still wins the meet in Olympic weightlifting, yeah. and and yet strength is not uh, considered to be an important part of the uh, of the equation. You know, but, well, I, here I, let me let me let me fill that in for you. Okay, what is going to be said right now? Uh, right now, people are watching this and they're throwing shit at the screen. And what they're saying is, Olympic weightlifters in the United States certainly do train for strength. They squat a lot. They squat all the time. They squat more than power lifters do. They squat all the time. Uh, and you can hear it. You hear it in the background from the hall out there from where you're sitting right now. I hear it in my ear that doesn't have the headphone in it right now. I hear it coming in already. I hear it coming yeah. in. Is and there an Olympic weightlifter in the United States who can deadlift 750 pounds? Maybe, maybe Kendrick Ferris. He's the only one I can think of. And he's the only guy that goes to the Olympics. I don't think so, no. but maybe. He's the only one that would ever be close. Right. And I don't think he can. Who's the super heavyweight guy now that we've got? It's a pretty good lifter. Um, well, he jerked over 500. Kane Wilkes. Kane Wilkes is no, doing real can't. well. I understand that. He uh, can't deadlift that. I don't think. You know, and I, well, he'll be sure and let us know if he can. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I uh, mean, I'd like to hear, but you know, really. I hope he like can. I, I'd, I'd be real interested to know if he can because I think that may be one of the reasons why he's doing so well. Sure. Well, that's the. Uh, I use Kendrick Ferris in, as an example because that that's why he's successful. Kendrick is strong. 
Yes. Kendrick is a, is a strong human being. Yes, he the is. technique is not that great. He's strong as hell, and he makes weights, and he makes big weights because he's, because of the fact that he squats and deadlifts, and he does stuff over at LSUS where, you know, he's continually gotten strong since he was 15 years old. And uh, I don't think that there's anybody that would argue that Kendrick is not very, very strong. Uh, I remember him squatting. Uh, let me see if I can. I, I believe I saw him squatting 300 kilos. Or was that yeah. a deadlift? I, I, this has been, as I said, I stopped being interested in this a while back, and I can't remember exactly, but I remember he handled 300 kilos, 660. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure and, he has. And, uh, and this is during, this is back right before the 2012 Olympics where he did get in, indeed get a slot and went mm -hmm. to London. Uh, now, now in the, and we're in the same situation this year, just to point out, to clarify, as in 2012 where he earned a slot based on his performance individual. So we can, right. that's our only chance of getting a slot again at, Pan at the Pan American Games or Pan American Championships. So we're same, same situation. We didn't earn any slots through our, as a country, as a USA at the World Championship. So it was the same deal. We haven't improved. Oh, so he can, in, he can earn a slot on his own, irrespective of country placing at the Worlds by virtue correct. of total at an international meet. Right. Okay. So our, at, a, they call, at a continent, so basically the Pan American Championships, right. that's our last shot, which we have a pretty good shot at getting one spot, but it's an individual I spot. See. So. Okay. Well, and uh, you folks in the audience, forgive me if I get the details wrong. As I've explained a couple of times already, I don't care anymore. So, uh, because it's just too frustrating to, to deal with these people. Uh, but, since I don't care why are we talking to Tom today, because Mary's done so damned well. And I want to uh, recognize the fact that she's done well. And I, and I wanted to, to point out the fact that Tom has got a little bit different approach than everybody else does. And to sum it up, and Tom, you tell me if I'm wrong here, uh, Tom's principles and his premise here in, in, in training Mary has always been that power is a function of strength. Power is the display of strength quickly. Power is strength expressed quickly. It's explosive strength. If the strength is not there, it doesn't matter how explosive you are. And he has always based Mary's training on this principle. The stronger we get her, the heavier a weight she can demonstrate the perfect technique on snatch and clean and jerk with. And this, is, uh, this has been the guiding principles uh, through which he's trained her. Uh, tell us more about how you have made that into uh, uh, a, a reality for Mary's training. How long has it taken her to get where she where she is now. So been about what four years? Yeah, about, about four, four years almost. Four years now. This is basically the you know, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of ups and downs. Um, but really what I've done with her has never been really anything that special. You know, my like you said, my main philosophy has always been strength is the driver. So at the heart of it, whenever I program things, whenever we're approaching training you know, the number one thing that I'm looking at and the thing that I base everything around is going to be our squat, our deadlift, our press, and our bench. Those are those are the four lifts that matter the most to me. When, when At the end of the day, if those aren't going up, then something's wrong. And we low bar back squat, we deadlift with high hips, not, not, a, not a clean deadlift, it's a deadlift. We press just like the starting strength method teaches and we bench press you know, at least once, twice a week. And from there, you know, everything else is kind of basically planned from those main four lifts. And with that, I treat the Olympic lifts as a skill. Olympic lifts are a skill that need to be practiced. Right. And if you want to get good at them, you have to practice them a lot. If you want to be an elite level Olympic lifter, you have to practice them a lot. But the only way that those lifts can go up is if you get stronger. And then you practice your skill and you get stronger. And you practice your skill and you get stronger. And then with that, your, your snatch and your clean and jerk will eventually 
continue to go up and not just kind of reach the same level and stay there for three years. Right. Just keep you, no matter how strong she's getting, she, she needs to continue to get stronger. That's the only way that she can get better. Right. So the snatch and the clean and jerk are expressions of strength. So if we get stronger and we practice, 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 snatch and clean and jerk, then the snatch and clean and jerk go up along with strength, right? Yeah. So these other people believe that the snatch and the clean and jerk make you stronger. This was developed by Lynn Jones uh, back in the 80s and 90s. It, they have tried to uh, assemble a bunch of different assistance exercises, various partial pulls, partial snatches, partial cleans, partial jerks, uh, triple cleans, double jerks, a bunch of different assistance type exercises, and uh, tried to uh, assemble a program of making athletes stronger by doing exercises that were dependent on the display of strength, while at the same time failing to do any primary strength exercises at all. Um, when Shane Hammond got there um, back in the late uh, back in the late nineties, uh, he came into the program as a thousand pound squatter and a and about a, a seven eighty five deadlifter. The first thing they did is take him off of all of this strength work. And uh, I've watched this happen several times to strong athletes that have gone to the to the national program at Colorado Springs, and. The thing has been designed for many, many years uh, to specialize in uh, exercises that display the strength that is already there, but they have consistently failed to make anybody stronger. Uh, by the same token, they have consistently failed to improve anybody's Olympic weightlifting total significantly in the, in the period of time that they've been there. And uh, this, has been a, this has been a problem for, uh, for the program for quite some time. Uh, and I, I don't think that's disputable. It's just one of the problems that we've had, and it's, it's one of the reasons we place 35th in the world every year, too. Uh, the program is badly designed. The national program is badly designed. And you don't follow it, do you? No, I, I, I don't really subscribe to, you know, I don't really know exactly what they're doing at the, at the Olympic Training Center, um, but you know the the way that I program and the way that we train is is uh, much different than what they do there. From what I know, um, you know, I, I think I think we're like you like you said and um, like you talked about earlier in that. I think the general approach to the snatch and the clean and jerk that most coaches will take is correcting deficiencies based on, like you said, accessory exercises or breaking it down into its constituent parts and working on certain areas of the lift, which I think maybe has some amount of payoff at some point if you're getting stronger, right? And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, that again, the strength has to be the driver in order to allow you to fix a deficiency, right? You can't just, if somebody's weak, Let's say somebody is, is, you know, really weak at the, you know, at the knee in their snatch. Well, just snatching from the blocks at the knee or doing like a hang snatch at the knee or doing pulls from the knee, that, that can only go so far. It's not going to make you be able to snatch more weight unless you can deadlift more. Or right. if you're able to score, right. if you have the capability to produce force to a higher degree. So, yeah, how would snatching a weight that is essentially 50, 55% of your deadlift, maybe even 60% of your deadlift, make you stronger. The weight's too light. I know it's explosive, but we are talking about force production. Right. And force production is a function of the weight on the bar. And, uh, and I, think, I think something that you've talked about before and something that's been discussed is like you said, a lot of a lot of Olympic lifting coaches will say, "Hey, well, here's what the best in the world do." <clears throat> Here, you know, they're in Russia, they're doing this, and in Poland, they're doing this, and 
you know, Uzbekistan, wherever, they're doing all these, these lifts and, you know, they're with, you know, from the hang or these, you know, partial lifts or whatever. But like you've talked about before, these athletes are the cream of the crop, right? And they're, they're working with, like you said, you talk about the Bulgarians all the time. Uh, max clean and jerk for a Bulgarian is a different stress than it is for me. Right, there yeah. is somebody who's not as good of an athlete. Right, right? by it, virtue it, of the fact that that Bulgarian athlete has a 38-inch vertical, right. and you've got a 26-inch vertical. Right. The right. the neuromuscular event is a completely different thing for those two people doing exactly the same movement. The neuromuscular event is a different exposure to stress, and therefore the adaptation to that stress between those two athletes is going to be completely different. An explosive training experience is two different mu neuromuscular events uh, for two different athletes. If a guy's got a 38 inch vertical and another guy's got a 26 inch vertical, the guy with a 38 inch vertical is much more efficient in terms of recruiting motor units than the less efficient athlete. And as a result, every training thing that he does produces a different quality of stress. A guy, a team that is completely composed of guys with 38 inch verticals may well be able to get away with uh, clean and jerk, snatch, front squat, and back squat, maybe. Is it, you know, that's, that's uh, Abagio's famous uh, approach to the thing has not been to do assistance exercises, just do the lifts. Do the lifts a lot, and squat, and front squat. And uh, for those kind of guys, that may work very well. But that's not really um, a practical approach to building stronger athletes for uh, people of more normal, you know, neuromuscular composition. Sure. And uh, this is, uh, uh, if you, uh, if you're not a freak, you can't train like a freak, and uh, it, it and you know our our results have have kind of shown that that is uh, that is the case. And the the stance that I've taken with that, you know, and if you can identify the, I mean, if you look at somebody's vertical jump, like Mary, Mary doesn't have a great vertical jump. She's got a twenty one. Two and a half. Uh, it's <laughs> gone up a, a little bit, but it's way above average for a female. It's above that, but way you know, above for, average for a female. But for you know, I you know I train athletes with you know some of the the athletes that I train at the university, 26, 26 you know freaks, right? Genetic freak for freaks. girls. She's a, she's a good vertical jump, but not that's a, a for, yeah, it's know, above like, average, but it's not a it's not a one not, you know for one percent ninety nine percentile. Sure, uh, but with that understanding that knowing she. You know where she can make them, and just like anybody, where he she can make the biggest gains is getting stronger. Sure. She gets strong, and she has to focus on strength, and in order to compete with the genetic freaks. Right, and doesn't mean she can't. Seems she to be can working, do. doesn't it? Right. I've always been really weak, and so uh, you know, gaining strength has given me a lot of confidence, and my lifts have gone up a lot. I've increased my total, like the first two years or so. 20 plus kilos a year um the lifts have always kind of sort of come easily to me mm -hmm. but um strength has definitely been the driver i mean i think i like had a hard time front squatting 70 kilos when i first started maybe 80 you know and i'm not the best squatter but we've worked on it and it goes up that's where the potential to make progress is yeah for and all athletes everybody can get stronger everybody can get stronger if your technique in the two lifts is at 95 percent of its potential where is going to be the best time spent working on that last five percent or getting your squat up 100 pounds duh right duh and so, I, I don't know i don't know about you but when i when i watch people go for big lifts Usually, the stronger guy is the guy who makes the lift. You know? Yeah, the, that's the kind of. I mean, technique isn't, you know, the end all be all. No, no, when, no. Uh, I think uh, just this past year in 2015, uh, Klockov has been touring the United States, uh, saying much the same thing, right? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't misconstrue what he's talking about, did I? Yeah. I'd hate to. 
I don't pay a ton of attention, but I think so. I think that's what he's talking about is that 80% strength, 20% Olympic weightlifting, that sort of thing. So, sure. uh, Mary, you've, uh, you've been at the Olympic Training Center at some point. What was your exposure yeah. up there? Um, so yeah, I went back for the world team camp in, I think, October of 2014. Um, it was a great experience. I mean, I usually train by myself, so it was nice lifting with other people. Um, and then I went back, um, this past April, just kind of on my own and, um, asked if I could come to train because I was kind of, um, so like I said, I was, I had a spot on the Pan Am game team and, um, it wasn't a secure spot, so I needed to compete at one more competition just to, because I was going to get knocked off, so I was going to try and get that spot back. Um, so I went out there just to get the experience, and I don't really pay attention to too much of what other people do, but um, right. I like the environment. Oh, it's a great facility, isn't it? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. You know, so. there's, there's a lot to be said for for a residence at the national team. And, yeah. And uh, the food, at least used to be, really good in the cafeteria. And, yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, competitive environment up there. The, you know, yeah. everybody around it, you is lifting heavy weight, or at least trying yeah. to. And uh, yeah, it's a great place to go. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's nice. It's um, for the most part here, I don't work too much. I do babysit and stuff, but um, there you're you're really focusing on weightlifting. So all you do is you train, you eat, you sleep. You know, and it's all job. it's all right there. It's really nice, and mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, 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 the feel that I get from from the Olympic Training Center, the the incentive to get better there, it, it's once you're there as a resident, it, it's you're already there. You're there. You've you're made it. There. You know, and and I think I think they want to get better. I think all the athletes oh, there work, I have, work hard. They listen, want to. And, I have never had a problem. But my complaints about all of this stuff have always involved the coaches. The athletes, obviously, would kill each other to sure. do better. But if their coaches don't understand fundamental stuff, sure. like we've discussed today, it's not and the athlete's fault. There's no one, no one is a bigger supporter of uh, Olympic weightlifters than me. My beef is with the coaching staff. And uh, it always has been. Uh, I've been to the Olympic Training Center several times, and I've watched some incredibly stupid things take place in front of my eyes in that in that facility. And uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, disappointing that it continues to occur. Uh, well, in uh, in order to keep this from being a bash fest on uh, American Olympic weightlifting. What? Uh, uh, let's talk about uh, what your plans are for Mary here in the future. What do you? Uh, you guys are training at school at Sac State, or is is? Uh, yeah. So we train so, out of the weight room at Sac State. Right. Um, Mary, you're a nope, student nope. at Sac State. Nope, no, not anymore. Yeah, graduated. Oh, that's right. That's right. You'd already mentioned that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's Right. So, well, at least they're letting you use the weight room, huh? Yeah. yeah. A nice yeah. facility. Too. Yeah. Oh, I've been in it. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful so, facility. It's got everything. Got everything we need. Um, you know, making a making a push here, final push for for 2016 Olympics. The way that you know she trains and the way that I, I coach her. You know, it's easily adaptable. You know, I. I People, a lot of times, you know, people ask how we train and how we do things and how, you know, a program set out. And, you know, I, I write things maybe three, four weeks at a time and, you know, kind of see what she needs to work on. Right. Again, always have to get stronger, but, you know, it's... Well, she's it's, she's it's, close to an advanced lifter now. And, the you know, programming takes place in four, five, six-week blocks at this point. Sure. Sure. And uh, she's not making any of your progress now. And that's exactly the way it ought to be done. Right. So, you know, it, it makes things tough, but it's it's something that we can we can work around. But ideally, um, get to, depending on if she, right now we're waiting on word whether or not she qualified for what they call a special trial session, which mm -hmm. would make her eligible for the Olympic trials. 
So depending on whether or not she's in that, um, it'll lead up to the national championships or the Olympic trials, in which case we're hoping to put up a big total to give her a shot at the Olympics. And that's kind of the final push for 2016 is where we're at right now. Right. Well, I have no doubt that Mary's going to be uh, where she needs to be when she needs to be there. She's got a good coach and a, and a great competitive attitude, and we're happy to have both you guys with us today. Uh, keep us posted on your training. We'll be seeing you soon, by the way. We'll uh, uh, see you in Los Angeles. This is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're talking – here on New Year's Eve, and we'll be out in L.A. in a couple of weeks and hope to see you. I know you're coming down to audit. We'll catch up. We might even no, drink, no, I'm, I'm going we might even drink a beer, you know. <laughs> I'll that, be at the, I'm going to the Santa Cruz one, the Santa Cruz. Oh, you're going to Santa Cruz, not to L.A.? Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's cool. I'll have a beer then, too, That's though. cool. Well, we'll yeah. Well, I'm not going to wait on the beer. <laughs> okay. Tom, thanks for being with us. Mary, thank you for being such a good representative of what we try to get done here and uh, being a good athlete for Tom. Uh, all the best in 2016 and kick some ass, okay? Good, good, good. Thank you guys for being with us. And Thanks, thank Rick. you for joining us on the podcast. We'll see you next time.